What's going on guys? This is Brandon from Walker's Woodworks. Uh, today I'm going to show you how I made this epoxy river mini bench. I kind of just did this for a model. Basically I want to make some full size ones like this, but I kind of wanted to get an idea how I was going to do it uh, before I put it into a bigger scale. Uh, basically you just have a river here of epoxy and uh, waterfall edges and then a little bevel here cut for some style. So let's get to it. So I started out with some knotty alder I had laying around the shop. I set my blade to a 45 degree angle and cut the bevels on all three pieces that I was going to be using for this piece. I then turned it the other way with the back against my cross cut sled and cut a miter that I'll use for the corners. So maybe I'm just easily amused but I thought this was cool. So these are all cut at 45. So put tape here and here on the seams and you just pick it up. They act like hinges, it's a little bench. So with the tape on the back, I laid it flat on my workbench. Um, the part I did not show here was cutting the biscuit slots because I accidentally deleted the video, I think. But anyway, you get your slots in there, um, put your biscuits in, make sure you get plenty of glue in the slots and all around them. I use Type Bond 2, it's one of my favorite assembly glues that is not gonna be touching food or water. Um, it works really well. So get it all lined up as best you can, put a little bit of pressure, and then grab a clamp. I really like using Bessie Parallel Clamps. Um, they have a lot of pressure and control. You don't want to tighten it down too much because it might uh, slide on the miters with the glue and all that. So just give it snug, make sure it's not going to go anywhere, check for your alignment and all that good stuff. So I didn't want the river to go all the way through this little bench. Um, I'm using a shaping dish from Cuts All. This is the coarse version. Uh, it's really good for this kind of stuff, shaping, carving, anything you want to do like that. It works extremely well. I do advise wearing gloves and eye protection and a dust mask, obviously. So basically what I'm doing here is just kind of carving out the river. And then I move on to sanding all the little sharp edges off and burrs and stuff like that. Um, I use this little micro zip from Gator, works really well. So what I'm doing here is just taping up the edges. I used to use painter's tape for this. Basically all it's for is to keep the epoxy from running out of the sides. So you want to make sure it's got a good seal. You also don't want to push in where the epoxy is going to come up to because then you'll end up having to refill it in a little bit more. So do this in any place that you went over the edge. Um, that's obviously going to run out of the little river that you created. I always use black diamond pigments. I mixed ghost blue pearl and golden indigo. Just mixing up the epoxy here and everybody's favorite part is always the pour. So all you want to do here is just make sure you get an even amount throughout the river. You can start at one end and let it drift down if you'd like. I just kind of like to put it in evenly. It'll auto level once it all gets in there though. Also, whenever you're pouring epoxy, you want to make sure to follow the instructions. Most epoxies you don't want to pour over an eighth inch thick or it will actually get too hot and bubble and crack, and smoke and bake itself. Once it's poured, you'll notice little bubbles on top. What you want to do is get a torch or a heat gun and go over it and pop all those little bubbles. Make sure you can go over it quickly. And then it's time to sand. I usually start out with my belt sander on anything that's epoxy river style. Uh, I start out with usually 80 or 120 and kind of go down from there. Once I have the belt sanding done, I move on to the orbital and do the rest. Um, I'll usually sand epoxy up to 220, 320, something like that, and then polish with a steel, steel wool pad where only the epoxy is just to give it a finer finish. Make sure to sand in all the corners because most stains and finishes will not stick to where glue is and you'll be able to see where it was. I really like the micro zip here. It gets into all those tight cracks. And I use Rubio Mono Coat on this one. It's a really nice finish. It's a one step deal. You uh, use a squeegee to put it on. You only need one coat and it looks amazing. It's more of a natural finish. Um, it's an oil wax 
kind of deal. It uh, does not have a gloss to it, which I kind of like actually. I've pretty much started using it on almost everything I do, slab work and all that kind of stuff. So check it out. And then I'll just show you guys some beauty shots here. So I hope you guys liked the video. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I appreciate it. Uh, like, comment, all that good stuff. If you have any questions about this build, please leave it in the comments below. I'll try to answer all of them. Um, so yeah, I want to do some bigger ones like this. Hopefully, I thought this might just be a cool little video to uh, show you guys how I do stuff. Um, the, the epoxy I used was Total Boat 2 to 1 with uh, black diamond pigments in there for color. So, yep. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.